Hi all and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today at webinar focusing on potential induced degradation of your PID. This webinar is co-hosted by Renewsys, the premium manufacturer of solar panels, cell, EVA, POE and backsheet, and Beckett Solar Energy, who represents Renewsys in Europe and the Americas. My name is Katarina Nimek and I work for Beckett Solar Energy representing Renewsys. Today's speakers are Sandeep Delbakutuni and PJ Narang. Sandeep is a senior manager at Renewsys for Department of Innovation. He is a semiconductor technologist with over 13 years of experience in this field. Sandeep is instrumental in new product development and setting up the reliability laboratory at Renewsys. DJ Narang, our second speaker, is the Assistant General Manager at Renewsys. DJ has been part of the MP group for over 10 years. He comes with 21 years of experience in business development, sales and customer support. DJ will take us through the host introduction and then Sandeep will focus on the technical part of the presentation. And at the end, we will conclude with Q&A. Thank you again to all of you for joining us today and VJ, please go on. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina, for the introduction. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Vijay Naran. I'm part of the Renews' global sales team and I'm based at Dubai responsible for business development and customer support for Middle East, uh, East Africa and Europe. So I'll take you through uh, Renewsys. Renewsys, we are one of the integra first integrated manufacturers of key solar components, that is EVA, backsheet, solar cells and PV modules. We, Renewsys is part of the NP Group. Uh, as NP Group, uh, our turnover is more than $300 million. We employ uh, 3,000 plus employees. We have diversified group businesses. Sandeep, if you could uh, please change the slide. Yeah. So we have 4,000 plus employees. We Renewsys is part of the NP group. As... Next, please. Yeah. So we have diversified business interests. Interests. Uh, we do flexible packaging, uh, designing, and uh, solar business, which is Renewsys. As you can see, these are the various companies uh, of NP Group. Now coming to uh, Renewsys, we have our manufacturing facilities in India, in Hyderabad, Bangalore. We also have sales offices all over the place, like in Middle East, we are based in UAE. We have offices and warehouses in South Africa, Nigeria, and we have offices in Singapore, Mauritius. We have representation in USA, Mexico, Brazil through Beckett uh, Advisors and we have customers over more than 22 countries. So this is this has been the Renews' journey. We started our business in 2010, uh, uh, 2011, sorry. We started with manufacturing EVA and backsheet, and gradually we uh, also ventured into the cell and module manufacturing in 2015. That's when we uh, were a 300 megawatt company. We uh, developed, uh, you know, the market in India and also started exporting modules. In 2018, we uh, doubled our production capacity from 300 megawatt to 750 megawatt. And we also increased our backsheet uh, production capacity to three gigawatt. And 2019 has been uh, an year wherein uh, we uh, increased our EVA capacity to 1.4 gigawatt. And we've also been empaneled with Intertech, which is a testing laboratory. And 2020 uh, has been a year where we uh, launched our Deserve Galactic Ultra, which is the 500 watt peak modules and the higher efficiency panels basically with big, bigger cells. So that's been a, the brief uh, introduction about Renewsys. And now I would like to hand over to my colleague Sandeep, who will take us through the potential induced degradation uh, details. Sandeep, over to you. Uh, thanks a lot, Vijay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Sandeep. I look after quality and uh, the new product development aspects of uh, Venusis uh, uh, towards the photovoltaic crystalline modules. Uh, I welcome everyone. Uh, today, we would be discussing about uh, potential induced degradation. 
uh, which is uh, uh, one of the defects which is uh, observed across uh, varied uh, locations uh, depending upon the site of installations or the system voltages which is so the impact of the conditions at which we install our system voltages we will be looking into it how does it occur where where does it occur and all those things <coughs> so basically introduction to pid uh, as the name suggests uh, pid is potential induced degradation uh, is the phenomenon with which uh, module uh, the module starts degrading more than what it has to uh, this is because of the higher potentials at which the modules are installed at the system level so uh, what what does uh, pid uh, do so that the power of a module comes down or the energy generation capability of a module comes down basically what it does is uh, uh, it electrically modifies the solar cell uh, resulting in a leakage current uh, across the sandwich that is the glass uh, eva frame and finally to the solar cell uh, damaging the uh, the active part in the model that is the solar cell so uh, the power uh, uh, degradation increases uh, it would be typically in the range of around 30 40% and in few cases it could go up to 70% or more so uh, how fast it can occur uh, it, it might occur in few months depending upon the season with which uh, we have installed uh, it might go up to few years depending upon the materials which have been used and uh, the uh, system voltages at which we have connected our system connections what we have with respect to the ground potentials now uh, uh, PID uh, causes a degradation uh, in, in terms of the performance which is very rapid so if we are able to detect at the nascent stage yes uh, we can have uh, a mechanism with which we can reverse the effect of the PID. Uh, thereby, we can uh, retrieve whatever the energy means, whatever the energy generation capability which is there of the solar model. But if you are not able to detect that in the nascent stage, then uh, the modules will be permanently damaged and there is no returning back. Uh, so the power or the energy losses, whichever are there, are going to be very high. So uh, while we are installing a plant. Uh, plants which are typically at the higher voltage levels uh, that is around 1000 volts and nowadays the system voltages are gone uh, beyond 1000 volts to 1500 volts so it's always better we take a prevention than then wait for PID to happen then decide what to be done so it's that is the reason we always say prevention is always better than cure so the way we select the model the way we design our system the way we do our grounding are more important uh, in uh, Re reducing the effect due to potential induced degradation. So, what actually is PID? So, uh, there is a there is a picture over here, uh, which which typically shows what happens and all those stuff. Uh, when when solar modules are uh, uh, connected uh, in a string, uh, generally, depending upon the system voltage, suppose if it is around thousand, we would be connecting around eighteen to twenty panels. Then if it is a 1500 volt, we would, we would go up from 29 panels to 30 panels or slightly beyond 31, depending upon the location and the temperature at which, uh, uh, temperature uh, at which these locations reach. So as, as we see, as we connect them in the series, the first panel is at the lower voltage and the last panel being at the higher voltage uh, and which would be grounded. So the negative difference or the potential difference between the cells which uh, which are there in the module and the ground which is typically at zero, this huge difference of the potential is going to uh, cause effect of potential induced degradation. So uh, this, this would be uh, basically occurring between the solar cells and the ground potential which is basically the frame of a solar module which is an aluminum which is a conductor. So, because of the strong fields between the cell and the, uh, and the frame which is connected to the ground uh, at after certain level if the proper dielectric strength is not being provided a leakage current that drives the ion mobility within the module between the semiconductor materials and uh, other elements of the, uh, uh, the module basically the glass which has got sodium starts to migrate towards the surface of the solar cell uh, when they start moving towards the surface of the solar cell, uh, the maximum power point at which it operates comes down. And there is a drop in the uh, open, open circuit voltage and at the same time, it is negatively affecting the shunt resistance. That is, the shunt resistance of a solar cell and a complete solar module is going to come down. So, uh, 
uh, typically when we when we uh, connect the solar modules in a series when it is operating under sun uh, solar sun, uh, cells are the active part which would generate the current basically individually and they are connected in series inside a module and finally uh, at the system level these modules are connected in series so these the solar cells are large photodiodes where they gen start generating uh, electron and hole pairs which are uh, separated due to the electric field at the pn junction so the incident sunlight which dislodges the electrons tend to move on the top surface which is towards the blue blue side which is the sunny side and are being collected to the grid uh, uh, which are there which are called as finger fan bus bars which are of silver and finally onto the load through the uh, the wire uh, wired connections what we have but uh, uh, in a condition where uh, where is a damp surface uh, due to a rain or due to a fog or something on the glass which is touching the frame we would have a, a conductive surface on the surface of the glass which would be at zero potential then we have solar cells which are at minus 1000 volts uh, with respect to the string and with respect to the location in which the model is uh, in the string so this huge potential difference of 1000 volts or 1500 volts depending upon the system voltage which we which we install the electrons which are supposed to get collected at the top of the solar cell and migrate through the grid on the solar cell towards the loads through the cables uh, get stuck because of the zero volt potential which is due to the current load because and electrons being negative they get stuck so now there is a huge amount of potential which is getting accumulated one on the glass side then other the electrons which are getting accumulated on the surface so uh, once these electrons get accumulated and if the accumulation reaches a certain point where the dielectric strength of the silicon nitride layer on the solar cell eva and Uh, and uh, uh, and the glass. Uh, what actually happens is the sodium ions, uh, which are there in the glass, which are the basic properties of the uh, 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 basic components of a solar glass, start migrating towards the solar cell. And because of these higher potentials, they migrate so fast that they dislodge uh, uh, the uh, p-n junction, which is there in the uh, solar cell, thereby. making it in you know, uh, completely damaged and the performance of a solar cell means uh, the one cell pn junction is completely damaged it no more acts like a, uh, a photovoltaic cell uh, it simply acts like a metal or a conductor kind of stuff where there is a direct path so even if sunlight falls onto that uh, solar cell it cannot generate electron hole pairs even if it generates electron hole pairs there is no electric field to separate the electron and hole so this is the effect what we are going to have uh, during a pad so uh, as we see here okay uh, this is a more graphical representation of the same thing what we were discussing so the high re uh, relative voltage forces the sodium ions diffuse from the glass which is a basic component of a solar glass uh, which is used in typical solar modules through the encapsulant and eventually accumulate on the surface of the solar cell this diffusion increases the surface recombination of the uh, solar cell thereby causing a local shunt that is the reason typical reason why the shunt uh, shunt resistance of the solar cell comes down and uh, this in turn affects the field factor of the solar cell and in turn there is a drop in the maximum power point at which it operates and uh, which is typically shown in the voltage in terms of voltage of a solar cell uh, modules uh, in a string uh, with with higher negative potentials are affected more compared to models which are uh, towards the starting of the string which are towards the less negative potential or towards the positive potential uh, in pad effect uh, in pad affected modules the potential difference between the cell and the frame resulting in the leakage uh, current which flows from cell to encapsulant to glass and frame uh, this leakage current will also help us understand how much amount of pad we are having if you are able to detect this leakage current up front itself then we can uh, look into some uh, methodology where we can reverse this pad effects in the night when the solar modules are not operating and uh, if it is not taken care of this pad uh, uh, degradation is going to increase uh, over the time and at some at certain point it go, it's going to reach around 50 60 to 70% and modules are completely damaged so how does it occur in terms of string locations if you see 
uh, 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 set of modules. Let us assume this this being a 1500 volt or a 1000 volt system. The left side being uh, 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 at minus 1500 or minus 1000 volts, and uh, right side being uh, the positive one. If you look into this, when we ground, uh, the ground is at zero potential, and the, the modules which are on the left side. are at negative potential so there is a net difference of 1000 volts whereas if you look into the other side the potential difference is not that much uh, with respect to the polarity since both are them are in a positive side so this will create a huge potential difference for the models which are there on the uh, left side of the screen and these are the cells which are going to have the pid effect and the pid effect on the negative side is also going to decrease the more you travel towards the positive side and also one more thing is the cells uh, in a model which are closer to the frame are the ones which are going to get affected more because frame being a conductive part part of the model and is the one which is directly grounded so uh, what are the factors uh, which affect the pid okay so here uh, we can see we can take into account uh, four different factors first one being the environment uh, second one being the uh, uh, cell level third we can look into the system level and finally at the module level as well so in terms of environment what are the factors that are affecting the solar uh, modules uh, with respect uh, with effect to pid so the relative humidity and the temperature at which these modules operate uh, basically uh, at higher temperatures and the higher relative humidity levels the uh, uh, polymer materials what we have basically the eva is going to degrade more compared to a normal operating conditions which are typically at 25 30 degrees so the moment uh, that uh, when the moment when solar modules are operating at higher relative humidity levels or temperatures the dielectric strength of the eva or the encapsulant which we use tend to come down result, uh, resulting in a lower production for uh, pid now uh, coming to cell level Uh, if we look into a solar cell, uh, we have an ARC coating which is there in order to reduce the reflections on the surface of the solar cell, thereby increasing its performance at STC and so on. So the thickness of the ARC with which we have will also contribute how much PID effect it is having. So if thickness is not uniform or thickness is less, uh, thickness is uh, less than the required, or if, if thickness is less than the required amount. then the amount of dielectric strength that uh, silicon nitride layer which is an insulator can create comes down so there is a chance that the solar cells might fail in pid and other option uh, uh, in terms of protecting the solar cells uh, for, uh, in terms of pid effect is apart from the arc layer which is silicon nitride layer which is there on the solar cells uh, we should be adding oxidation oxide layers Uh, once we have an oxide layer it would form a silicon dioxide which is having a very high dielectric strength though the layer is thinner so this would help in protecting our solar cells in a module uh, from the pid effect then coming to the module level the two key components which might contribute uh, uh, to the pid are the encapsulant and the glass uh, in term, uh, from from encapsulant point of view uh, the higher the dielectric strength of the encapsulant the better it is so if you typically take the encapsulant which were uh, being used a few years back uh, were having a dielectric strength in, in terms of in the range of around 10 for 14 kind of stuff now uh, to uh, negate the effect of pid the dielectric strength has been increased by 10 times so now typically in the range of 5 into 10 for 15 and uh, in future uh, and another encapsulant apart from eva which which is uh, being discussed often is polyolefin which is having uh, a dielectric strength in the range of 10 power 16 so which is far more better material with respect to the pid effect so now coming to the glass in a solar module so the lesser the sodium content in the glass the better it is because sodium is uh, sodium ions are the major ones which start migrating from the solar cell sorry solar glass towards the solar cell uh, resulting in the degradation of the uh, performance of the solar modules due to pid now uh, the final thing Uh, in the cycle uh, which comes is the system level so during installation what are the care uh, what are the uh, precautions we can take so that we can avoid uh, uh, the effect of pid while we are installing a larger power plants with a higher system voltages are 
first we need to understand system biasing voltage levels at which we are using and we need to look into the module uh, details whether this module can be installed at uh, such high system voltage levels even if it has uh, it can be installed uh, are the proper certifications place where these modules have been tested for pid uh, the the bill of materials whatever which is being used in terms of glass and capstan controller cells have been tested uh, for this system voltages yes if it is tested then it is good then irrespective of whether this whether whether the module is being made using a solar cell which is having a better arc properties uh, an oxidation layer sorry an oxide layer uh, a glass with low sodium ions and an capstan which is having very high dialysis it is still advisable to look into the type of grounding what we are doing so we need to see whether we need to do a negative grounding or not Uh, if we do negative grounding, yes, it is always advantageous uh, to protect the conventional uh, P-type solar cell-based modules. Now, uh, in terms of PID testing, uh, uh, actually, initially uh, during the start of the uh, 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 the solar industry, the effect of PID was not observed because the system, the P, uh, the, the solar industry started with system voltage in range of 600 volts, where the effect of PID was not observed. because the dielectric strength for 600 volts were enough of the materials like the solar cell uh, that uh, the area were enough but the moment the industry started shifting towards 1000 volts or beyond the effect of pid started to come into picture so the standard the international electrotechnical commission which is basically iec started uh, uh, having a dialogue across the industry what standard to be developed or what are the test conditions which have to be developed so finally Uh, a draft uh, draft circulation uh, has happened uh, which is still under circulation uh, which is uh, what uh, a module need to be tested depending upon the system voltage it is operating in and that conditions are uh, the temperature should be around 60 degrees centigrade plus minus 2 degrees uh, to up to 85 depending upon the requirement of the local authorities and then with a relative humidity of 85% so once a module is uh, uh, need to be kept in a climatic chambers with these conditions where the temperatures are typically in the range of 60 degrees to 85 degrees with a humidity of 85% the module need to be kept in the chamber for a duration of 96 hours with voltage applied as per the system voltage that is if it is a 1000 volt module yes we need to apply 1000 volts between the frame and the junction box uh, if it is a 1500 volt we need to apply a 1500 volt between the frame and the junction box keeping the remaining conditions of uh, temperature and humidity constant in both the system voltage voltage cases uh, once the module completes 96 hours typical things to be looked into are the iv measurements so where we should look into the fill factors uh, the, the drop in the npv point typically if you have to say that a module has passed the degradation power has to be less than 5% and we have to look into the el to see whether are there any cells which have been darkened particularly on the periphery of the module where uh, the cells are very close to the uh, the frame okay uh, then uh, t- uh, certain certain uh, uh, certain uh, countries have their own pid testing standards depending upon the climatic conditions that that they operate in typically if you take india which is a subtropical climate where the temperatures and humidity are, uh, are on the higher side the test conditions decided are the test conditions decided are to 88 hours uh, with a temperature of 85 degrees centigrade and rh of 85 percent so uh, we at trenesis uh, have seven climatic chambers which have the capability to do these pid tests so whatever the products are whatever the materials we make are uh, whatever the material we use in our uh, products are all being tested for such effects so that there is no uh, the, even if there is a slight chance we would be de- detecting it upfront itself so that the products what we offer to the market are completely free from pid this is a typical iv curve uh, once the testing is done uh, how does it look depending upon the time or duration for of our fit has tested uh, all its effect actually if you look into it uh, a typical module which is tested for 40 hours uh, is having a uh, the curve or means the iv curve uh, typically of this where the fill factors are still reasonable 
once the test duration is double to uh, once the test duration is double to 8 years if you see there is a drop in the maximum power point thereby impacting the uh, uh, the fill factor of the module and if you see the the drop in current is considerably very less whereas the drop in voltage is considerably very high so similarly if you extend it to 100 hours this is how it looks like it looks like a more straight line kind of stuff where there is a huge drop in terms of fill factors and uh, fill factors and other things and in in terms of pl once the testing is completed how does it look like if provided if the module is not protected from pid so before test this is how uh, the top image is how the module looks like uh, the bottom one uh, is after uh, completion of the pid uh, test uh, for uh, duration of 96 hours at uh, uh, 85 degrees centigrade and 85% tarnish so if you see the solar cells which are near to the frame basically which is on the periphery of the image whatever we see are being affected by pid and they are completely uh, they reach a state where they cannot be reversed at all so they are completely dark in the el image so these are the cells which have the darker ones are the cells which have got affected by pid and they are going, they are not going to produce any power so typically considering the number of cells uh, which have gone dark or considering the cells the number of cells which have been affected by pid typically we would be losing around 30% of the model power what actually it's supposed to produce so uh, in terms of module manufacturers if you look into the impacts of pid first 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 and the most important point is typically uh, modules are uh, given uh, a warranty of 25 years for its life basically so this would be affected hugely uh, and second most important thing for uh, the installers which they have to consider is uh P- the effect of pid get worse with higher temperatures and higher humidities uh and can lead to a more power loss uh, with upon time and at higher temperatures and high, higher humidities the effect might be more severe and the effect might be coming very fa- at a very fast pace uh early detection if you are able to detect pid at the early stage yes uh, we can reverse the voltage across like uh, frame can be uh, uh, grounded to the negative and modules can be connected to the positive thereby uh, reversing the effect of uh, the potential induced degradation but if we cross this stage uh, degradation becomes uh, irreversible and the amount of power losses what we are going to have will be around 30 40% in most cases and it would can it can go up to 70% uh, if we don't do a prop if we don't take proper precautions while we make modules or while we select modules uh, and at the same time while uh, in uh, proper precautions have not been taken during installation so uh, challenges and solutions for pid since uh, I means like environment we can't control the temperature uh, because uh, solar modules are supposed to be installed everywhere and wherever we can even on floating we can even on water we can you install solar modules using floating applications so environment which is not in our control should not be considered but other three things what we can control are are need to be taken out and taken care of and uh, while we while we install the modules we need to tick and see whether all the aspects which which can prevent the pid on a solar module are being taken care of or not so from cell level point of view is the air sea level thickness proper does the cell have an oxide layer Uh, increasing the surface dielectric strength if yes yes it is very good and uh, one more thing what we have to see is if the cell itself is not protected from the pid effect that is uh, by adding an additional oxide layer with a higher dielectric strength even if the encapsulation material is having higher dielectric strength even if we use a glass which is having a lower sodium even if you do negative grounding still there is a chance that the model is going to fail at uh, 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 due to pid so it is very much important that a module need to be protected from the cell level first then additionally we can protect it from the panel level that is by using an encapsulation material like polyolefins which are having high, higher dielectric strength and a glass which is having a very less sodium content then at the system level it is always recommended to have a negative grounding in case if you are able to detect if 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 those modules uh, somehow skip the first two stages and at the system level if you are able to identify the drop in the power about 5% or 10% on the overall plant level 
then immediately we need to check for uh, PID. Once we check and identify, yes, it is having a PID, we need to opt for PV offset boxes, where typically the module, the polarity across the module, that is between the frame and the junction box is reversed, so that we can reverse the PID effect and make the models perform again normally. So this would be an hour process, which 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 can go day in and out, day out. That is, in during daytime, it operates as a solar module. In the night, it, oper it operates as a load kind of stuff. So uh, that is it uh, from our side uh, with respect to the PID. So any questions, please ask. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Sandeep and uh, Vijay for taking us through the slide deck. Um, I would like now like to ask the attendees uh, if they have any questions to please write on the panel on the sidebar and we will ask uh, Sandeep and Vijay to address them. So Sandeep, currently there is one question. Hi, good evening. So I'm just going to read uh, the first question that we have uh, from Sean. Is there any new technology which would help installers check PID in modules after the installation before the damage becomes irreversible? Uh, actually, uh, uh, means a technology which is already there in the solar industry since a long time and which we have discussed uh, uh, in the presentation as well during the testing part actually the easiest way to detect the effect of PID is to do EL. Uh, earlier uh, electroluminescence test was uh, limited to the production levels but nowadays these electroluminescence tests are done on the field uh, during night uh, or uh, even on during days also it is and during daytime also it is done where there are specific cameras which would help. So uh, any module uh, which, which, which is affected by PID uh, would appear uh, uh, as what we have seen earlier, like uh, certain certain cells, particularly which are close towards the frame, appear dark. So that is the point where we have to consider yes, it is affected and immediately start working on it. And uh, typically, if the power losses go uh, like in in a couple of years or uh, if they reach around five percent, that is definitely a signal for you. You you immediately need to check for PID. Uh, thanks, Sandeep. Can you just show us that uh, slide again uh, with the image? Sure. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'll just uh, take up the next question from uh, Ron Holland. Uh, what is the best method to minimize PID at the installer level? Uh, you see the, I, I, from the installation point of more than installation point of view, uh, what I would say is the model what you are going to get uh, site for your installations. Uh, please ensure the from model manufacturer that he has taken proper care that the solar cell which is used in that module is of uh, PID free because the one the, the component in uh, in a module which is going to get affected is basically a solar cell. So if you are able to protect your solar cell. Then, uh, irrespective of the precautions what you take uh, at the module level or system level, yes, it is protected. And at the same time, if you consider the uh, system level, if you are not so sure whether the uh, uh, the module is PID or the cell is PID free or not, so you need to look for a negative grounding. If it is a P-type uh, 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 wafer which is being used, typically we have a P-type which is of the major set. So if you have either monoperc P-type or a multi uh, uh, polycrystalline P-type solar cell, uh, it is recommended to go for negative grounding. And uh, in, in case, uh, if you still feel that negative grounding is not possible, it is recommended to go for PV offset boxes, 
where the solar module functions normally as a solar module uh, for power generation or a current generation uh, uh, during the daytime. In the night time, the, uh, the polarities between the junction box and the frame are reversed so that any, of, any effect related to PID is sorted out. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Sandeep. Uh, in continuation, we have another question from Sean. Um, yeah. What is the optimum system voltage to negate PID in solar modules? Is there an optimum system voltage that you would recommend? See, uh, uh, okay, uh, because uh, as, uh, I, 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 when I was speaking about the presentation, I said that typically when the solar industry started, right, the effect of PID was not identified. Uh, so why it was not basically identified is because uh, in those days the system voltages were uh, were at 600 volts. So at 600 volts uh, you won't find any issue. And even if you take a smaller uh, installations like uh, for a smaller home we, where we typically connect around 5-10 modules, this effect is not going to be there. So the moment you touch 1000 volts or beyond, then this PID comes into picture. So in terms of voltage I can say 600 is more or less safe. In, in fact, 600 is safe, but from starting from 1000 onwards, you have to be very careful. On 1500 volts, which is the current trend, you have to be even more careful. Okay, okay, noted. Thanks, Sandeep. Um, another question that has come in uh, is with regards to encapsulant. Uh, yeah. Can using PoE instead of EVA make any difference? Yes, uh, actually, uh, okay. The general term what the industry uses is PoE. Uh, uh, I said polyolefin. Actually, polyolefin is PoE only. So, polyolefin is definitely having a higher adult resistance compared to the uh, EVA, what we generally use in the solar industry. Yes, it is going to help a lot uh, in terms of PID if you go for uh, polyolefin. Thanks, Sandeep. Uh, another question is how is PID different and uh, its effect different, in fact, in glass to glass? versus glass to backsheet module? Uh, uh, see, uh, 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 like if you take a glass to glass module or a glass to backsheet module, whatever the difference we are creating, we are creating it from the back side. From the front side, we are not creating any, means we are not having any change. Both the modules have glass at the front side. The only difference is in a glass to glass module, do we have frame or not? Okay, in a normal glass to backsheet module, we, we have a frame which is uh, required uh, to give the mechanical rigidity and at the same time to, for, uh, for the sake of easier installations. So if you take a glass to glass module, uh, we have two rigid surfaces on top and the back. So some module manufacturers will not have the, uh, uh, the frame, but uh, there are other issues. So uh, in glass to glass modules also, uh, nowadays, okay, a thinner frame is coming into picture, but aluminum frame is there. The moment we have frame, the effect is same on both glass to glass as well as glass to back sheet modules. If glass to glass modules do not have a frame, then PAD, uh, uh, the option of, I mean, the problem of PAD is not there in glass to glass modules. Uh, whereas in glass to back sheet model, it is always having a frame, so this effect is always there. Okay, so, uh, so we can understand, therefore, we can infer that uh, if a module is a frameless module, it is yes. uh, unlikely to have PID. Would that yes. be accurate? Yes. Okay. Okay, thanks. Is there any Basically, effect? Basically, if you don't uh, have any conductive for... Sorry, yeah. please, please continue. Yeah, 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 I mean, you just continue, I'll then prepare that for both of them. Uh, so we have a, another question that has come in with regards to the encapsulant again. Uh, yeah. Will increasing the thickness of the encapsulant reduce the PID effect? Uh, yes, it will decrease. Uh, the effect of PID, but at the same time, it might not be a valuable option uh, in the solar industry because increasing thickness not only, okay, in terms of PID, yes, it is protected, but at the same time, it is going to decrease your, the transmittivity of the light. Basically, the basic function of a solar module is not to protect from, to make it get protected from PID, but the basic purpose of a solar module is to generate at its maximum when these uh, modules are installed in the field. So if we increase the thickness of the EVA, the opacity is going to increase, thereby the transmittivity is going to decrease, uh, which, which makes the performance of the solar module to go down. So that is uh, not a viable option, but protecting it 
uh, using encapsulants like uh, polyolefin is a better option. Okay. Uh, thanks, Sandeep. Uh, now we have two uh, slightly similar questions here. Uh, one is how, I think you've sort of answered this, but if you can just explain it again for us. How can you check if a module is PID free without having its certification? And uh, the second question which is linked is how can an installer know the accuracy of a PID free marked product uh, module? Uh, uh, Vinal, can you just let me know the first question? I didn't yes, the first question is how do you check if a module is PID free without having its certification? Uh, see, certification is a process where some third party says yes, this module is uh, PID free or not. But other than that, uh, uh, it is not always uh, we need a climatic chamber where the modules are installed uh, inside, uh, means where the modules are kept inside a chamber where the temperature is around 85 degrees and uh, humidity is around uh, 80, uh, uh, 85 percent RH. The other way to check its PID is to have a copper foil, uh, uh, to have a copper foil covered on the glass side, then connect uh, uh, that whatever the system voltage is there. Like suppose if you take 1000 volts, 1000 volts on, onto the copper foil and uh, the other terminal to the junction box. So that is the easiest way uh, if provided proper safety precautions have been taken care to, uh, to see whether the module is PID free or not. The marking, if you want to see, it can only happen if the module is being sent to third party with certain bomb and the same bomb is being used uh, while we are taking the module. Then yes, that is the only certification mark. Like if you send it to any of the third party labs, they will certify say, saying that this is the material which is being used uh, for making this module and this module is PAD free. So then they will give a marking uh, with their, whichever the lab, whichever it is. Hi, good evening. So I'm just going to read uh, the first question that we have uh, from Sean. Is there any new technology which would help installers check PID in modules after the installation before the damage becomes irreversible? Uh, actually, uh, 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 means a technology which is already there in the solar industry since a long time and which we have discussed uh, uh, in the presentation as well during the testing part actually the easiest way to detect the effect of PID is to do EL. Uh, earlier uh, electroluminescence test was uh, limited to the production levels but nowadays these electroluminescence tests are done on the field uh, during night uh, or uh, even on during days also it is and during daytime also it is done where there are specific cameras which would help. So uh, any module uh, which, which, which is affected by PID uh, would appear uh, uh, as what we have seen earlier, like uh, certain certain cells, particularly which are close towards the frame, appear dark. So that is a point where we have to consider yes, it is affected, and immediately start working on it. And uh, typically, if the power losses go uh, uh, like in in a couple of years or uh, if they reach around five percent, that is definitely a signal for you. You you immediately need to check for PID. Uh, thanks, Sandeep. Can you just show us that uh, slide again uh, with the image? Sure. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'll just uh, take up the next question from uh, Ron Holland. Uh, what is the best method to minimize PID at the installer level? Uh, See the, I, I, from the installation point of more than installation point of view, uh, what I would say is the model what you are going to get uh, select for your installations. Uh, please ensure the from model manufacturer that he has taken proper care that the solar cell which is used in that module is of uh, PID free because the one the, the component in uh, in the module which is going to get affected is basically a solar cell. So if you are able to protect your solar cell then uh, irrespective of the precautions what you take uh, at the module level or system level, yes, it is protected. And at the same time, if you consider the system level, if you are not so sure whether the uh, uh, the module is PID or the cell is PID free or not, 
so you need to look for a negative grounding if it is a p type uh, 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 wafer which is being used typically we have p type which is on a major set so if you have either mono perc p type or a multi uh, uh, polycrystalline p type solar cell uh, it is recommended to go for negative grounding and uh, in, in case uh, if you still feel that negative grounding is not possible it is recommended to go for pv offset boxes where the solar module functions normally as a solar module uh, for power generation or a current generation uh, uh, during the day time in the night time the uh, the polarities between the junction box and the frame are reversed so that any of any effect related to pad is sorted out okay thanks thanks sandeep uh, in continuation we have another question from sean Um, yeah. What is the optimum system voltage to negate PID in solar modules? Is there an optimum system voltage that you would recommend? See, uh, uh, okay, uh, because uh, as uh, I, 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 when I was speaking about the presentation, I said typically when the solar industry started, right, the effect of PID was not identified. Uh, so why it was not basically identified is because uh, in those days the system voltages that were uh, were at six hundred volts. So at 600 volts, uh, you won't find any issue. And even if you take a smaller uh, installations, like uh, for a smaller home we, where we typically connect around five, ten modules, this effect is not going to be there. So the moment you touch 1000 volts or beyond, then this PID comes into picture. So in terms of voltage, I can say 600 is more or less safe. In, in fact, 600 is safe. But from starting from 1000 onwards, you have to be very careful. On 1500 volts, which is the current trend, you have to be even more careful. Okay, okay, noted. Thanks, Sandeep. Um, another question that has come in uh, is with regards to encapsulant. Uh, yeah. Can using PoE instead of EVA make any difference? Yes, uh, actually, uh, okay. The general term what industry uses is PoE. Uh, uh, I said polyolefin. Actually, polyolefin is PoE only. So polyolefin is definitely having a higher dial resistance compared to the uh, EVA, what we generally use in the solar industry. Yes, it is going to help a lot uh, in terms of PID if you go for uh, polyolefin. Thanks, Sandeep. Uh, another question is how is PID different and uh, its effect different, in fact, in glass to glass versus glass to back sheet modules? Uh, uh, see, uh, 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 like if you take a glass to glass module or a glass to back sheet module, whatever the difference we are creating, we are creating it from the back side. From the front side, we are not creating any means. We are not having any change. Both the modules have glass at the front side. The only difference is in a glass to glass module, do we have frame or not? Okay, in a normal glass to back sheet module, we we have a frame which is uh, required uh, to give the mechanical rigidity. And at the same time, to, for uh, for the sake of easier installations. So, if you take a glass to glass module, uh, we have two rigid surfaces on top and the back. So, some module manufacturers will not have the uh, uh, the frame. But uh, there are other issues. So, uh, in glass to glass modules also, uh, nowadays, okay, a thinner frame is coming into picture, but aluminium frame is there. The moment we have frame, the effect is same on both glass to glass as well as glass to back sheet modules. If glass to glass modules do not have a frame, then PID uh, uh, the option of, I means the problem of PID is not there in glass to glass modules. Uh, whereas in glass to back sheet model, it is always having a frame, so this effect is always there. Okay, so uh, so we can understand. Therefore, we can infer that uh, if a module is a frameless module, it is yes. uh, unlikely to have PID. Would that yes. be accurate? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Is there any Basically, effect? Basically, if you don't uh, have any conductive. Sorry, yeah, please, please continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you just continue. I'll then reply back for both of them. Uh, so we have a, another question that has come in with regards to the encapsulant again. Uh, yeah. Will increasing the thickness of the encapsulant reduce the PID effect? Uh, yes, it will decrease. Uh, the effect of PID, but at the same time, it might not be a viable option uh, in the solar industry because increasing thickness not only okay in terms of PID, yes, it is protected, but at the same time, it is going to decrease your the transmittivity of the, the light. Basically, the basic function of a solar module is not to protect from to make it get protected from PID. 
but the basic purpose of a solar module is to generate at its maximum when these uh, modules are installed in a field so if we increase the thickness of the wire the opacity is going to increase thereby the transmittivity is going to decrease uh, which which makes the performance of the solar module to go down so that is not a viable option but protecting it uh, using n caps lens like uh, polyolefin is a better option okay uh, thanks andy uh, now we have two uh, slightly similar questions here uh, one is how i think you sort of answered this but if you can just explain it again for us how can you check if a module is pid free without having its certification and uh, the second question which is linked is how can an installer know the accuracy of a pid free marked product uh, module uh uh when i can you just let me know the first question actually i think yes it. the first question is how do you check if a module is pid free without having its certification uh see certification is a process where some third party says yes this module is uh, pid free or not but other than that uh, uh it is not always uh, we need a climatic chamber where the modules are installed uh, inside uh, means where the modules are kept inside a chamber where the temperature is around 85 degrees and uh, humidity is around uh, 80 uh, uh, 85% rh the other way to check its pid is to have a copper foil uh, uh, to have a copper foil covered on the glass side then connect uh, uh, that whatever the system voltage is there like suppose if you take 1000 volts 1000 volts on onto the copper foil and uh, the other terminal to the junction box so that is the easiest way uh, if provided proper safety precautions have been taken care to uh, to see whether the module is pid free or not the marking if you want to see it can only happen if the module is being sent to third party uh, with certain bomb and the same bomb is being used uh, while we are taking the module then yes that is the only certification mark like if you send it to any of third party labs they will certify say, saying that this is the material which is being used uh, for making this module and this module is pid free so then they will give a marking uh, with their whichever the lab whichever it is uh, with their logo which could which which would be used on these uh, solar modules name plates which are there on the back sheet or on the back sheet of a glass to glass module okay so essentially if the modules are installed uh, you said that there are cameras that will take uh, images and can identify whether a module is uh, suffering from pid or not and yeah. the other way yeah. before installation is to send it to a testing lab yeah that to send it uh, to a testing lab not for certification just to test the module even if that is also having a problem with proper safety precautions cover the module with a copper foil on the glass side uh then use a uh, uh, like a mugger kind of stuff where we can generate 1000 volts uh, connect one terminal to the uh, uh, the copper foil and another terminal to the junction box let it uh, go for few 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 days like uh, 24 to 48 hours where we can see whether the module is having any pid effect or not in case we don't have the capacity or capability of uh, using climatic chambers okay okay thanks this is a more crude way kind of stuff okay so uh i think uh, that is it uh, friends if you all have any more questions please feel free to share them with us uh we will just uh, hold on for a couple of minutes more I think uh, that is it. Uh, thank you, Sandeep. Uh, thank we you. haven't received uh, any more questions. Uh, the, the last call for questions, friends. In case any of you all want to share them with us, uh, in case you have questions that come up later, please feel free to get in touch with us, and uh, we will address them as best possible. Uh, thanks again, Sandeep and uh, Vijay and Katrina for taking the time. 
uh, and thank uh, i would like to thank each one of you for joining us today uh, at this webinar on behalf of uh, renewsis and uh, beckett sola we wish you all a great uh, rest of the day and uh, the coming weekend ahead stay healthy and take care thank you thanks vanil thank you everybody for joining in thanks vanil thanks everyone